What's up guys, it's Richard here and today I'm going to be doing a video review on the Dutop 2-Bay SATA NAS unit. Starting off I'll be showing you how to install a hard drive and then I'll show you how to do some configuration a bit later on. For starters, I am only going to be using a 320 gig Seagate Barracuda SATA 1 drive. I do have two high volume SATA 2 drives that I will be putting in a bit later. Just need to back everything up on them and then I'll do a follow up video showing you the RAID configuration as well as some speeds to and from the device and all that good stuff. For starters, let's just have a look on how to install this. Basically, when you take the unit out of the box, you're going to have four rubber mats on each of these screw holes at the top. Pull them out, take the screws out, and that will reveal the top of the unit. Here we can see we've got our fan to keep the hard drives nice and cool. Quick look inside, you can see quite clearly where the SATA data and the SATA power connectors are. And we've got two metal brackets on either side, which are designed to keep the hard drives in place. So installing the hard drive is pretty simple. Only going to go in one way. Obviously, you don't want this end touching up against that metal bracket, so it's going to need to go in this way. Putting the hard drive in, I like to hold on to it by both sides quite firmly. Just push it in like that. When it gets to the metal bracket, push down quite firmly but slowly at the same time just to get past it. And then you'll feel it get down to the bottom and click in place with those connectors and that's nice and secure. Obviously if you wanted to do it for a second drive, just repeat the process on the other side. Now that we've the hard drive installed, I thought I'd do a quick uh, tutorial on how to actually get the device configured and up and running. So if you want, just want to chuck in that CD that came with the uh, box and open that up and in there you've got a setuputil.exe so we'll run that and we've got a setup. So basically what it's doing now it was searching for the actual NAS device on the network. Um, as you can see I have actually changed this one to LOL Patrol and just updated all the settings in here um, but you'll basically just need to click OK and then you can go through to the configuration page. The default password is admin and then we've got some settings in here so it's server name and you can choose whether to set a static IP or automatically via a DHCP. Then we've got the time zone, date, time and then we've just got a settings confirmation so you just save that. And then you're done. So once we've gone through the initial configuration from the CD, we can access the GUI configuration page via your browser. So you just need to browse the IP address that you assigned, the NAS or the one that was assigned via DHCP. The default username is admin, as is the password. Now the first time you log in, the, f the only option you're going to have in here is the control panel. There's going to be a little icon here saying that you need to format the drive before you can proceed. So to do that, you just go to maintenance, disk utility, and then you go to format. So I'll quickly run through the other settings available in here. I'm not going to go into too much detail, otherwise the video will be quite long. Basic setting, uh, it's pretty sort of simple configuration pages in here. So you can change the host name, etc. So we'll go to the more advanced configuration in the control panel here. First option we've got is users and groups. So under here we've got uh, user management, uh, group management, and then we've got our file and print settings. So this is the settings for the file server, share management settings, and your print server setting. Under here we have uh, system settings. So we've got our LAN settings where you can change the host name and the IP address configuration, time settings. You can turn off the server, so if you're accessing this page remotely and you're not sort of in the same room and you want to restart it or turn it off, you can do so in here. Information, we've got our firmware version, our product vendor and the IP address. Disk usage gives you a summary of the hard drives you have installed in the NAS. Area notifications, it's pretty handy, a lot of uh, routers do this and it allows you to select what kind of uh, area notifications you want and then you can also set it to send an email to a specified address when they occur. And here we've got our network service. So we've got our DHCP server settings, our media server settings and our bonjour settings. Under maintenance we've got our disk utility again, our RAID settings. Obviously can't set that up right now because I've only got that one hard drive in there. Firmware upgrade, so you can download the latest firmware from their website and then update it through here. Save the configuration to make a backup of any 
configuration changes you've made inside here and then you can restore that at a later point. Factory reset obviously causes all the data on here to be lost. Media server upgrade and we've got our software update here as well. And then finally we've got our log files, so Samba logs, FTP logs, DHCP server logs, system logs and administration logs. And under here you can change the information of the current account that you're logged in with, which in this case is admin. So I thought I'd finish off this video by showing the NAS unit in action. As you can see we've got our top light on for power, our second light on for LAN connectivity and the bottom light is on to indicate we have a hard drive installed in the second slot. We've got the unit connected to a billion 7800N over here. Windows access is really simple as you can see we're using Windows 7 here. Under our network section we've got LOL Patrol and we can access our folders. So the first time you do this it will ask you to connect with the username and password but after that you're just able to click on it and then you can jump straight into the folders and files you got on there. And just to prove that it plays friendly with Macs as well as you can see it's showing up under our shared locations here. All we need to go to is connect as and then we can use our default details of admin or any specified uh, accounts that you have created and we can access the folders. Overall guys, I'm pretty impressed with the Dutop 2 bay SATA NAS unit. I was recently fiddling and sort of scavenging for parts to make a file server. Uh, this has made that pretty much unnecessary as it does everything I need to. You can have up to four terabytes worth of storage in it. Uh, you can access it across Windows computers and Macs and we've got the extras like the media server and the iTunes server for streaming. So yeah, definitely a thumbs up from me guys, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, don't forget to subscribe.